My presentation will be on engineering bacteriophages as multi-tools against intracellular E. coli K1 infections. I'm a second year uh, MIBTP PhD student uh, in Antonio's lab where we work with uh, work at the interface between phage biology and human cell, cult human cell culture to optimize phages for uh, treating uh, bacterial infections that cause disease inside of human tissues. So to preface, I will talk a bit about uh, E. coli serotype K1. This is a common serotype of pathogen E. coli and is a cause of neonatal meningitis and urinary tract infections. Uh, these bacteria, these serotypes are very, um, well, the serotype is very invasive. This is due to its K1 polycyclic capsule, uh, which is a, a polymer of a salic acid uh, with alpha 2 linkages in a lipid <coughs> linked to a lipid raft. Uh, and K, E. coli K1 is so uh, invasive as it can, um, <clears throat> as it's very good at evading the host immune system. So uh, E. coli K1 can inhibit oxonophagocytic uh, processes by inhibiting the C3A, C3B uh, classical immune response. Uh, and also once phagocytose inside of human, in human cells, they can inhibit a lysosomal function so they can persist as vacuoles inside the cell. This is what allows uh, it's not. It's normally a. Uh, it's bacterium. Uh, it's normally bound to uh to the intestines to uh become <clears throat> become present in the bloodstream and also cross the blood-brain barrier to cause uh, meningitis. And neonatal meningitis is very important as uh, the mortality rate varies between twenty and fifty percent even with treatment of antibiotics, and that victims who recover from uh, meningitis suffer from uh <clears throat> suffer from uh, side effects such as uh, intellectual uh, disabilities or behavioral problems. So, it's a, <clears throat> and as we know, uh, this is a phage conference. So, my objective is to attempt to use phages to treat uh, to treat such infections. So, to give you uh, an outline of uh, the project aims of my PhD, the first is to genetic engineer uh, phage K1F, which is a T7-like uh, phage that target that specifically targets uh, K1 strains by virtue of endosalidase and tail fiber, which degrades these uh, alpha trait linkages. So my aim is to construct a fluorescent derivative uh, with increasing affinity to human cells by virtue of uh, the epidermal growth factor or EGF. And then compare this with a GFP only variant to assess the ability to enter human cells and clear uh, <clears throat> E. coli K1 in experimental infection model. The second is to identify surface receptors that are required for phage absorption K1F beyond the K1 capsule. And I intend to do this by uh, transposon 5 mutagenesis, and then from this screen mutants uh, and this candidate receptors. Uh, <clears throat> so we can identify what other uh, cell surface receptors are required for phage absorption past the K1 capsule. And then Lastly, to combine all of these together to generate a phage with enhanced affinity to human cells and enhanced affinity towards the bacterial host. And my presentation will focus on the first aim. So, for genetic engineering of uh, GFB, EGF fusion, uh, I'll, introduce, I'll introduce you to uh, epidermal growth factor, which is a 53 amino acid cytosol protein. Uh, this is required for growth and changes in gene expression. Uh, through the RAS, uh, RAF and MAPK pathways, and also the, the PI3K pathways, which uh, cause changes in gene expression and this growth. However, the most important thing is that binding of EGF to its cognate receptor in green, the diagram on the right, cause it to internalize via clustering mediated endocytosis. So the objective is to express uh, both of these proteins, GFP, so it can be visualized in EGF, so you can smuggle uh, so to speak, the phage inside of human cells on the minor capsid protein uh, G10. So this, in theory, should enhance uh, cell tropism of this phage to, to human cells, and thus resulting in a greater number of cytosolic phage to infect bacteria to more efficiently clear such uh, intracellular infections. So for the design, uh, I chose a recombination-based approach as it is fairly straightforward. So the five, so you see in the diagram here, uh, uh, two module regions, five prime and three prime, uh, where the five prime corresponds to the C terminus of G10. Uh, and I integrated this into the PMX uh, 
thus with which uh, confers kind of myosin resistance. Uh, so the EGF I chose, the sequence I chose, is a synthetic sequence uh, that was produced in Bacillus brevis in a 1989 paper. Uh, although a synthetic construct, uh, it shows a very similar activity to uh, naturally produced human EGF. And so this sequence was also uh, used in uh, a paper in a study where they uh, genetically engineered uh, phage M13 bacteriophage M13 to produce epidermal growth factor for uh, gene transfer. Uh, once, <clears throat> once it's been done before, uh, phage, haven't, uh, phage have not been engineered to express EGF for the purpose of treating intracellular infections. So, is it, so in that regard, this uh, work is novel. And the result is to uh, produce a G10 GFP EGF translational fusion at the C terminus. So, Following uh, electroporation of strain EV36, which is the uh, organism of choice for this project, strain EV36 is a K12 K1 curly hybrid, uh, which is essentially a K12 strain, but it uh, but expresses um, the K1 capsule under the <coughs> AGL operon. So I electroporated uh, my uh, formatting construct into EV36 and infected with my wild type phage. To induce a molecular sleep combination. So, in A here, you see uh, screens of single plaques for uh, EGF, which produce at a band of 400 base pairs. And in uh, B, you see uh, plaques that are, you see plaques that I screen for GFP, which produces a base, uh, a band of 650 base pairs. Uh, of the, uh, so as you see in A, uh, of the 10 or so plaques I screened, I screened a total of 40 plaques in total. However, I screened about five, which were positive for uh, EGF, and I screened those for, for GFP, which are all positive, as you can see in B. And what I did here was uh, enrich it in transformed EV36 bearing this uh, construct. So I, just, so I successfully in, managed to successfully enrich um, the phage bearing, <coughs> bearing this insert and <coughs> and further propagated this and purified by a season fly purification to remove uh, bacterial DNA and also to ensure that the phage doesn't decontain the sequence in the correct orientation. So, so now that I've uh, verified the presence of uh, protein fusion, I wanted to test the uh, in vitro efficacy of uh, this, of this uh, engineered phage. So, so I did this in an in vitro cell model uh, using styles called T20, the cell line called T24. Uh, T24 are urinary bladder epithelial cells, which were isolated from 80, an 81 year old patient with uh, transitional carcinoma. <coughs> Before that, I also wanted to see whether it worked, it was efficient in liquid culture. So, uh, see, uh, yellow is a wild type KRNF, green is a uh, KRF GFP only, and the red line denotes uh, the construct which I've, phage which I've produced. And there was no significant delay in lysis. They were, of course, lysis after between 60 and 90 minutes, which means that there was no uh, significant delay in lysis by adding this additional, these additional proteins. But how does, this, how does phage behave in the human cell environment? Does it behave in the way we expect it to? So I answered this question by verifying the function of the EGF. So, I wanted, to, I wanted to establish that the two proteins are functional and also present via confocal microscopy. So what I've done here is uh, I use fixed and stained T24 uh, urinary blood epithelial cells with uh, paraformaldehyde and stained with antibody for the epidermal growth factor receptor, EGFR. And what you see here, it's a clear co-localization uh, at the cell periphery uh, with the receptor between the phage and the receptor, uh, the receptor shown in red and the phage shown in green, you see a very clear co localization in the merge insect. I also attempted this with a GFP only variant to check <clears throat> and, also, and found that there, wasn't, there was no co localization with the GFP only variant and its receptor. Oh, ne next, I wanted to try, uh, just, I wanted to try and see how well it can clear uh, experimental. EV36 infection. So I tried this and tested T24 again. So see here in the image, <clears throat> you can see uh, 
a blood of zero cells left uh, are stained with an antibody stained with the phalloidin, which stains the F actin of the uh, of the cells. So you can see the cytoskeleton and this determine whether uh, bacteria or phage are intracellular or not. And what I found was that uh, when you infect with this uh, GFP EGF variant, you will see a high number of uh, <coughs> Of, of intracellular bacteria that are targeted by the phage, as seen by the co-localization in, in the merge image. Phage addition uh, of both GFP and GFP EGF cause a significant reduction in uh, intracellular bacteria, which you can see here. When cells were only treated with EV36, about 20, approximately 20%, 20 sometimes, in some cases, almost 50% of cells were, um, infect, were infected with bacteria. Upon addition of phage, that would decrease to about 10% with a slightly marginal decrease uh, when the GFP EGF variant was added. But what I also found was that this was a was that the GFP EGF variant associated more frequently with invading bacteria. So as you see here in the right-hand graph, Kevin of GFP associated about 55% of bacteria after incubation for one hour. Meanwhile, Kevin of GFP EGF uh, associated with 70% of bacteria, highlighting a greater capacity to uh, target invading cytosolic bacteria. I then want to next test internalization efficiency of K1F. I want to see whether this was due to the greater capacity of the phage to internalize into human cells by induction of the uh, EGF receptor. So what I found was that both uh, cells, that both phage, sorry, can uh, invade human cells. And I found that K1F, uh, GFP, EGF, uh, invader cells more frequently, as seen by the confirmation in the year, as denoted by the right arrows. More phage were, phage were more present uh, more often, and this was uh, this was statistically significant when I counted cells to uh, quantify this. Just under 15% of cells uh, were GFP positive when GF, the GFP only variant was added after one hour. However, about 20% were positive when I added uh, the phage bearing EGF. In some cases, up to 25% um, of cells <clears throat> were positive after addition, after incubation for an hour. This might be due to the fact that uh, UNA blood epithelial cells, like many epithelial cells, are very rich in the EGF receptor. So this will enhance the ability for a phage to become intracellular. So your knowledge may vary if you're attempting to use this in different cell lines. Depends on the availability of the EGF receptor. So what I would next want to do was to identify the mechanisms by which they entered the cells. Since we know that the variants can enter human cells, it is uh, it's good to know why and how. So, I, so I identified, so my job here was to identify the cellular mechanisms involved in trafficking. So if you look in the diagram on the left, uh, normally the trafficking pathway goes as such, where upon, uh, binding of a ligand to a receptor becomes internalized um, into an enzyme via uh, early enzyme antigen 1 or EA1. Uh, this helps progress, this recruits uh, protein RAD5, and, or, and which in turn recruits the effective protein uh, small DTPase RAD7 uh, to, to induce uh, endosomal progression. So, it's also good to note that uh, foreign antigens, such as phage or bacteria, uh, can travel, can uh, become intracellular, come intracellular themselves by uh, Rab7 LC3B recruitment directly, which is direct phagocytosis. Um, so, <clears throat> what happens here normally is that the uh, late endosome uh, progresses, uh, fuses into lysosomes, uh, <clears throat> and is degraded by the by, uh, <clears throat> Proteolytic enzyme cathepsin L. In some cases, especially with uh, bacteria such as E. coli K1, they can escape. Uh, they can escape uh, said said vesicles and become uh, present in the cytosol. This can uh, this can in turn induce a response in the cell uh, by galactin H, which is a lectin, which is involved in uh, uh, bacterial stress response. So this recruits NDP52, which uh, polyubiquitinates uh, bacteria and then <clears throat> induces uh, xenophagy, which is a type of uh, stress-induced autophagy under bacteria, the cells are infected bacteria. So the GFP-only variant, uh, I should note, 
was the product of a previous paper from the Sagona lab, and they tested uh, some of these. Uh, they tested the effect, uh, some of these <coughs> pathways, and what they found was that uh, the GFP only variant entered via VAB7, localized with VAB7, pepsin L, galactin 8, and then DP52. So what I meant was that uh, they were the GFP only variant was directly phagocytose, was either degraded by galactin L or was tagged for destruction by uh, galactin 8. And, and MDP52. So to reaffirm these results, I stained with uh, all the aforement most of the aforementioned antibodies bar VAB5 in the key. Uh, when I stained with uh, early enzyme 1 to see whether the uh, KLNF GFP would enter by phagocytosis, sorry, by endocytosis, I found that it, it occurred at low frequencies. Like you see, often found images such as this, where there was no co localization, as you can see. From the absence of an uh, overlap between the E1 vesicles shown by the orange arrows and the phage in the white arrows. Uh, to reaffirm the results of the previous paper, uh, I found that the GFP uh, variant enters via direct phagocytosis. But because it can enter by EA1, it is possible that to some extent it does enter by the endolysosable pathway. To further uh, verify results from the previous paper, I found that uh, the GFP only variant induces galactin 8 recruitment and is ultimately de uh, degraded in the liposomes, as seen by the uh, co localizations between galactin 8 at the top and gathepsin L at the bottom. So, where does uh, my EGF variant, how does my EGF variant behave inside the human cell environment? I found that it was obtaken by cells uh, by endocytosis at high frequencies, as you can see by the co localization. Uh, the phage and the EA1 vesicles. I found this would uh, carry a frequency over double uh, that of uh, the GFP only variant. Uh, but like the GFP only variant, it also associates with VAB7, but since VAB7 is also associated with uh, early endosome progression, we can deduce that it uh, also associates as part of the endolysosome pathway instead of direct phagocyte, instead of VAB7 LC3B direct phagocytosis. It also, it also has the potential to uh, induce galactin-8 uh, colocalization due to presence in the cytosol, but at a lower frequency than the GFP only variant. And ultimately, it is also degraded. Its ultimate end is also uh, via cathep degradation in lysosomes through cathepsin M. When I quantified the rates of colocalization with these markers, I found that there was a very significant in uh, increase in uh, EA1 and a minor increase uh, for F7 for GFP EGF, which means <clears throat> so it enters. So, what this tells, tells us is that uh, this variant can enter by direct phagocytosis or by the endolysosomal pathway, which explains why these uh, why this phage is uh, much more persistent in, uh, in, these, uh, in these cells I tested. And also, that has potential to divert, subvert direct phagocytosis and degradation via entering through the endolysosomal endolysosomal pathway via the uh, induction of our uh, EGF receptor. What was also significant <coughs> was that um, it could localize with galactin-8 less often, which was also uh, fairly significant, but ultimately um, the rates of co-localization with galactin L and GFP and GFP EGF variants were <coughs> rather similar. So a future work to further to round out this uh, element of the project is to test uh, the stage in other relevant cell lines targeted by ECO like one So that would be uh, vascular endothelial cells, which are the cells that compose the blood-brain barrier, and also fibroblast cells, which are, <coughs> which are epithelial cells that are also targeted uh, by ECO like one these skin infections, and then test the trans transfection figures using these cell lines, and then assess the rates of uh, K1 clearance. Thank you for listening. I would like to acknowledge uh, Antonia, who is my supervisor, uh, Yin Shen, my co supervisor, uh, Richard Puxty, uh, an academic at uh, Warwick, who's been incredibly helpful to my research. I'd like to thank Zagona Lab and lastly, my two undergrad students, Jamie Kirvin and Ivan Chan, for helping me with the acquisition of these uh, results for the presentation. Thank you very much for listening. I will now be taking questions. <laughs>